Cool TV proudly presents Raceland Rams Softball as the Cool Hit Sports Network brings you coverage of the Rams live from Raceland, Kentucky. Now let's head to the field for the pregame show and Raceland Rams Softball live on Cool TV. And welcome into game number two of the Tri-State Showcase. James Carr, happy to have you along with us here as Lincoln County, West Virginia and Raceland gets ready to square off in this nightcap of the first day of the event. Raceland victorious over Sims Valley 6-2 in game number one here just a while ago. And the Rams will get things rolling here, trying to keep it, keep it as they picked up their 10th consecutive win with a victory over Sims Valley earlier today. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for the visiting Lincoln County Panthers. Leading things off and playing shortstop is Allison Ramey batting second in center field is Becca Pennington. Batting third and catching is Josie Bird. The cleanup hitter is the right fielder, Riley Scholl. Batting fifth at third base, Abby Jeffers. Batting sixth at first base, Laney Nelson. Batting seventh and pitching, Arian Cooper. Batting eighth at second base, Kirsten Ross. And batting ninth in left field is Chevelle Sammons. Ramey Pennington, Bird, Scholl, Jeffer, Jeffers, Nelson, Cooper, Ross, and Sammons. Defensively for the Rams, Mackie, Bernie, Lax, that's left to right. Third to first, Lily Poplin, Brenda Wellman, Shelby Gall, Savannah Ratliff, Callie Vance behind the dish, and the freshman pitcher of Willow Reed inside the circle. Reed making her first start of the season. She'll lead things off against Allison Ramey, the shortstop. And the first pitch is in there for a call and strike, and this ball game is underway. 8.51 first pitch, partly cloudy skies, 51 degrees. Light breeze still blowing around the ballpark. That one's in the dirt, or in the turf, I should say, one and one. Winds have dissipated down to only five miles an hour out of the west. They were up around 15 and 20 earlier on. Here's the one one. Runs that one in on the hands for a call and strike with a breaking ball. One and two. Left-handed swinging, Ramey stands and awaits the one-two from Reed. Misses low for a ball, two and two. This one's over to left field coming on. Mackey and makes the catch. One down. That brings in the center fielder of Becca Pennington. Pennington batting 444 on the season. Lifts this one skyward into the night lights. Wellman has a beat on it, makes the grab, two down. So with two down and the base is empty, the catcher Josie Bird steps in. Bird batting 595. 25 hits, 29 driven in. Six doubles, 11 walks. First pitch misses low for a ball. This Lincoln County team comes in swinging at 419 as a team. They scored 139 runs, currently ranked number two in the state of West Virginia in Class AAA. This is a rocket down the left field line and foul. One and one. Berta Sr., if I was told right, she's headed to play at Indiana. And if that's where she's headed, she's going to play for Shonda Stanton. former coach at Marshall University. My time up there when I covered the Thundering Herd with Shonda and her crew. 1-1 one, one pitch down in the turf, 2-1. and one. Two down, base is empty. Bird awaits from the right side as Reed back to work. Bounces that one into the plate as 3-1. and one. Yep. 
Reed has not worked in a game this season. Gets this one fouled off on the third base side. She did appear in seven games last year, three as a starter, had a record of 2-1 and one with a 4.20 ERA. Worked in 25 innings, 39 hits, 36 runs, 15 of those earned. Strikey on the walking 11. And she misses high and away for ball four in a two-out walk issue to Bird. So it brings in the right fielder of Riley Scholl. Jillian Starcher on the run for the catcher over at first base. And the left-handed hitting, Scholl steps in. The senior, 488 batting average. 21 hits, 17 driven in. Reed misses low with the ball, 1-0. Seven doubles, a triple, and one home run. She chops this one through the whole right side. That's in the right field for a base hit. Starcher tries to go first to third and will do so on the throw that scurries through the infield. So a single, and both runners move up on the throw. And a little two-out magic going for the Panthers here to start things off of the first. So it brings in the third baseman of Abby Jeffers. Jeffers batting 400 on the season. A sophomore. First pitch in the turf for a ball. Jeffers, 18 hits on the season, 19 driven in, a double and a home run. Reed trying to wiggle out of some damage here in the first. She got two outs early, but now two on. That one's in the turf again, 2-0. Right-hander settles in, the 2-0. Nice pitch at the belt for a cold strike, 2-1. and one. Rams jumped out to an early 1-0 lead in the win over Sims Valley, and then a two-run home run by the Vikings. It's made it 2-1. Rachel then got five runs across in the fifth four, those with two outs. This one's hit right back to Reed. She knocks it down. Nice play inside the circle. She fills her position perfectly. And a dynamite play to end the first. We're scoreless through the first half of an inning. Raceland coming to bat after this on Cool TV. J.D. Flooring, 2017 Ashland Road Greenup has been family owned and operated for over 30 years, featuring top of the line material, guaranteed installation, and absolutely no one can beat J.D. Flooring's price. Need to replace your current flooring in one room or the entire house? Call J.D. Flooring and Greenup. 606-473-0411 for a free estimate. A call that can get your house ready for any occasion. You'll absolutely love your new flooring from J.D. Flooring, 2017 Ashland Road, Greenup. The Greenup County Public Library System is the best. Read the latest bestsellers in large print, regular print, or audio CDs. You can also check out movies or place a hold on a book on our website or call one of the library locations to place a hold. There are community meeting rooms available by reservation at all locations for clubs and organizations. And be sure to check out the Jesse Stewart Collection at the Greenup County Branch. Check them out on Facebook and Twitter. Bottom of the first inning. Scoreless of the Rams coming to play. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Rams. Leading things off and playing shortstops, Brenda Wellman batting second and playing left field is Peyton Mackey. Batting third and catching is Callie Vance. The cleanup hitter is the third baseman, Lily Poplin. Batting fifth as a designated player is Reagan Mackey. Batting sixth in center field, Bailey Burney. Batting seventh at first base, Savannah Ratliff. Batting eighth and playing second base is Shelby Galls. And batting ninth in right field is McKenna Lax. Wellman, Mackey, Vance, Poplin, Mackey, Burney, Ratliff, Galls, and Lax. In the circle for the visiting Panthers, Arian Cooper. This will be her 10th appearance on the season. She has a 4-1 record. With one save, a 1.43 ERA on the season for the freshman. 
22 hits, over 34 in an inning, a third innings of work, nine runs, seven earned, striking out 64 and walking 10. So we're going to work on Brenna Wellman, who leads things off. Wellman had a bunt single in the first inning and came around to score the first run of the ball game. First pitch, Anthony is a called strike. Here's the 0-1. Wellman shows bun. It's a called strike with a breaking ball in the outer half of the plate. Nothing in two to the shortstop. Cooper has the one she likes. Back on the rubber she goes. The 0-2. It's fouled away. Cooper ahead 0-2 to the leadoff hitter, Wellman. Swing and a miss, strike three, one down. Pretty much everything she threw was down in the zone. So brings in the left fielder of Peyton Mackey. Mackey a 404 hitter on the season coming into tonight's game. That's a called strike right down the pipe. Here's the 0 1. Breaking ball runs up and away for a ball, 1 0. Down and in two and one to the left fielder. Swing and a miss. Challenger with a screwball up high and comes up empty. Two and two. Cooper has the one she likes, the 2-2 offering. Fouled away onto the first base side of things, onto the football field. Count hangs at 2-2. Two two. Mackey went 0-2 for two with a run scored, also walked twice. Mason put together seven hits in the ball game. Devanna Grubb picked up the victory, allowing only two hits in the 6-2 win over Sims Valley. Here's the 2-2 two -two to Mackey. She sends this one out to left center field. That one's going to fall in there for a base hit, and it's going to one-hop over top of the wall for a ground rule double. Good job, Pete. Good job, Pete. So Peyton Mackey picks up her fourth double of the season. It's a one-hopper off the left center field wall. And with a runner aboard, it brings in Callie Vance. And jumped off the bat as it didn't sound like that she got it all, but certainly looked different after it started taking off a little bit. Vance five, batting 552 on the season. She drove in the first run of the ball game, and much like this fashion here with Mackey out at second base. She looks at a pitch upstairs for a ball. Pennington out in center field giving... Vance a lot of room behind her. With the wind gusting out toward that left field wall now. Just misses 2-0. Oh.
Big swing and a miss. She wanted that one on a 2-0 pitch. She wasn't getting cheated. Two and one. Cooper winds and deals. That one misses, kicks off the catcher's glove. They'll throw back in. Mackey dives back in safely. You can't get leaked too far away from the bag because one thing about a bird has, has a cannon. And she is not afraid to throw it. Vance ahead, three and one. One down to the frame. Mackey out of second with the ground rule double. Nice pitch on the outer half of the plate. Count is full to the catcher for the Rams. Here's the payoff pitch. That one is in the night sky and gone. Kelly Vance yells Yahtzee as she knocks out home run. Hang on, I got to flip to the other season here. I had last year's pulled up where I was looking at Reed. Her eighth home run of the season, a no-doubter over the left field wall. The Rams take an early 2-0 lead. Here's a look at the swing on the 3-2 pitch. And that one was a no-doubter, fans, into the fence, well, below, well beyond the wall out and left. So the Rams with some more two-out magic to start things off with a 2 nothing lead here. And that brings in Lily Poplin, the third baseman. Poplin batting 500 coming into the night's contests. Looks at a breaking ball that runs up and away for a ball, 1-0. Oh. Poplin went one for three in the win over Sims Valley. Two and zero oh to the third baseman. Poplin typically works as the designated player here in the double header. Coach Scott Atkins shifting the lineup around a little bit, so Poplin getting the start over at third, replacing Reagan Mackey, and Mackey will work as the DP. And she's ahead three and zero, oh, nothing. The 3 0. Ball four. Four straight balls to Poplin. And with one out, brings in Reagan Mackey. She's typically playing third base. She's DPing in this one. 364 hitter is the senior. She was one for one with two runs driven in and two walks. Cooper's ready to go. Mackey trying to slow her down a little bit. She hacks at that one and comes up empty. The 0 1. Up and in. Backs are off the plate a little bit. Kind of even at 1 on 1. Our truck that was out in center field in the first game is no longer deposited there. I still wonder if it has a broken windshield. After the home run got deposited off of the, it was either the hood around where the wipers were or on the windshield when Sim Valley, Sims Valley hit the two-run home run. Mackey ahead, two and one. Swing and a miss. If anything, the Rams have made Cooper labor here in the first. This will be pitch number 25 in the frame. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Chopped foul.
The 2-2. Two -two. Foul away again. Good A-B here before Mackey. Cooper trying to battle and win the at-bat here as Mackey continues to foul off a pitch after pitch. And a called strike three on the outer half of the plate. Snuck that one across for a called strike three, two down. Nice spot there. She went away and froze Mackey. This one brings in Bailey Burney. Burney batting 370 on the season, 17 hits, eight driven in coming into the matchup. Earlier on this evening, she went two for three in the one over Sims Valley. Misses low, snap throw from Bird as Poplin's easily back to the bag. One zero. -oh. Lifted just over top of the third baseman's glove, but a foul ball. Rams with an early 2-0 lead after the two-run shot from Callie Vance over the left field wall. One ball and one strike to the Rams center fielder. Cooper into remotion. That one misses up and away. Two balls and a strike. Foul away. Two and two. Scores for Round Major League Baseball tonight. Pirates leading the Phillies five to two in the eighth. Rays in front of the Giants, 2-1 in the bottom of the eighth down at the Trop. Mets lead the Royals, 5-1. Angels beating up on the Red Sox up in Boston night, 7-0. They lead that one. 2-2 breaking ball runs away. Reds lead the White Sox, 6-1 in the bottom of the fifth up in Chicago. Rangers hammering the Astros, 7-1 down in Houston. Here's the payoff pitch with a base with a base runner on, and a swing and a miss as Bernie goes down swinging to end the inning. The Rams get two runs on the two run shot from Cali Vance. They leave a runner two nothing after one. Back after this on Cool TV. <laughs> Spring fishing season is just around the corner, and Border Sporting Goods is your fishing headquarters for rods and reels from G. Loomis, St. Croix, Fenwick, Luz, Daiwa, Shimano, and Abu Garcia. No matter what species of fish you are targeting, Borders has the perfect setup to make your next trip on the water a success. Borders has baits in every style and size with a wide selection of tackle from Berkeley, Strike King, Zoom, Z-Man, Bandit, and many more. Before hitting the water for your next fishing trip, stop by and stock up at Borders Sporting Goods, US 60 West in Ashland. Kentucky Christian University is a private, nonprofit university located in the beautiful foothills of Eastern Kentucky in Grayson. KCU offers both undergraduate and graduate programs, including the Teacher Leader Master of Arts in Education degree. They also have an array of competitive sports. Kentucky Christian University is committed to focusing on Christ while helping students build character and prepare for their future careers. Visit kcu.edu to learn more or to schedule a visit to campus. 2-0, Raceland leading Lincoln County. 6-7-8 do up this inning for the visiting Panthers, Nelson, Cooper, and Ross. So Laney Nelson will lead things off, the first baseman. 341 hitter, 14 hits, 9 driven in. Breaking ball catches the outside corner for a cold strike. Tried to sneak in the change up, but misses high. Count evens at one and one. Rams back in action tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock against Boyle County. Flair, that's a fair ball, just caught the white line as it rackets 
Ricochets down in the corner. And Nelson's going to pull in with a leadoff double. No chalk to pop up here because it's an all-natural surface. So white lines all the way around, but the umpire immediately pointing fair as that ball just went down the left field line. So the pitcher, Arian Cooper, steps in. Chance to help her own cause here, trailing 2-0. Big swing and a miss there on the 270 hitter. Ten hits, eight driven in, two doubles, five walks. So the first hit of the ball game, of an extra base hit for Nelson. Now the Vance had Nelson caught in between second and third there on the ball on the turf. Elected not to throw. The 1-1. One, one. Nice block there by Vance again, 2-1. and one. Here's a chopper out toward Wellman. She'll field and throw, not in time. She had to kind of check up because of the runner moving from second to third. And because she had to play back one extra step, that allowed the speedy Cooper to get down the line and they're at the corners with nobody out. So the infield single has runners at first and third and Kirsten Ross steps in, the second baseman. Ross, a 432 hitter. She rockets this one through the left side for an RBI single. Lincoln County's on the board. They trail a two to one. She wasted no time jumping on that pitch, clubbing in her 10th RBI of the season. So Chevelle Salmons now, the nine hole hitter, the left fielder. Shows bunt, puts this one down the first base line. Ratliff tries to tag, and the throw comes up short. And everybody's going to be safe. She missed the tag as she was able to get a rounder. Now Scott Atkins is going to come out and have a word with the home plate umpire. And then when she tried to throw over top of her, she was running down the baseline. And I think the conversation he's having here is the fact of she should have been going toward the red bag. She went toward the white bag. And that was where Shelby Galls was standing trying to feel the ball. So the bases are full infield in. And back to the top of the order we go. Ramey chops this one to the first base side and a foul ball. So danger zone here for Willow Reed. She needs a weekly hit ground ball in the infield or something that they can force a run out on the plate. Ramey 0 for 1. She lifts this one skyward to the right side at the wall. See ya. Allison Ramey clubs a grand slam. And with one swing of the bat, Lincoln County's blown this one wide open. It's 5-2. to two. Ramey's first home run of the season. And that one was a no-doubter over top of the orange monster out there in right field. So base is empty, still nobody out. And Becca Pennington to the plate. She flew out 
to Brenna Wellman her first time through. And next batter takes it right in the back. So now Josie Bird, the catcher, comes to the plate. She walked her last time through. Bird with six of the ten Lincoln County home runs. And we get a visit to the circle. If it's the first time with us here on Cool TV, hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you see something you like. Hit that bell. Each time we put out new material, we'll give you an alert there on your mobile device. Join us tomorrow morning here at 10 o'clock, 9.50 first or pregame show for Raceland and Boyle County in the third game of the Tri-State Showcase. One of the few venues that was able to play tonight, East Carter was washed out. They've now washed out their first game tomorrow due to that thunderstorm cell that missed us and shifted southerly down toward Grayson. I just talked to Derek Calhoun just a little while ago. So the first game of Frederick Douglass and Ironton has been canceled. And now the other two games with East Carter is also in jeopardy. But again, here with the artificial turf, no issues with the rain. First pitch to Bird, misses downstairs for a ball. This is a pitcher, a pitch here that you do not want to leave up in the wheelhouse. Bird will park this one down at super quick. We saw her hit one foul earlier, and it was a rope. That one misses high for a ball 2-0. and oh. There's a rope on the third base side, but a foul ball. Five two here in the top of the second after a grand slam from Ramey. Clean the bases. This one's lifted deep into the night lights. Bernie back at the warning track, comes in, makes the grab. Runner is tagging. Here comes the throw to second base. It's not in time. So Pennington with a little heads-up base running there, tagging up on the deep fly ball to center field. So with one down and a runner at second base, Riley Scholl steps in. She singled through the right side her first time through. That one's downstairs for a ball, 1-0. and oh. Two balls and no strikes. Grayson got two runs in the first off of Callie Vance's two-run shot. Lincoln County adds a grand slam here in the second, and they lead it 5-2. to two. And here's a rope right at Bailey Burney, and she jumps up and makes another great catch. What a catch by Bailey Burney on a ball that was a rope right at her. Here's your Grayson Sporting Goods instant replay on this one. Man, that's two tonight that she's made like that. Pennington had to scurry back toward the bag quickly. So two down now, Abby Jeffers to the plate 0 for 1. She lined out back to the circle to Reed and made a dandy play to end the frame. Swing and a miss. Nice pitch right there. Count goes to one and one.
misses low for a ball, two and one. Three balls and a strike and a pitch up and away. Downstairs, ball four. So a two-out walk has two on. So Laney Nelson comes to the plate for the second time in this inning. She let things off with a double. Reed has... Had a battle through here in the fur in the second inning. It's her 25th pitch in the frame. Here's the 1-0. Chopper to the third base side and a foul ball. Ball on a strike on the first baseman. Two on, two out. Nice pitch and a swing and a miss. One and two. Try to work upstairs with a screwball, but misses high. Two and two. Foul away. Our crew tonight, Travis Altworth, your executive producer, Felicia Collier on the field level cameras. Right. All these great shots here on Cool TV. Happen to have everyone with us tonight. 2-2 two -two pitch. Down and in, ball three, full count. So now both runners will have an opportunity to kind of plan ahead of Getting the jump on the pitch here. Three balls, two strikes, two outs here in the top of inning number two. Payoff pitch, misses ball four. And the bases are loaded once again. So Arian Cooper to the plate for her second at bat in the inning. She singled her last time through. Bases full of Panthers here in the second and looking to add to their 5-2 lead. And Cooper ropes this one into the gap, and that one's all the way to the wall. Two runs will come in to score. Cooper's in out at second base with a two-out, two-RBI double, 7-2 Lincoln County. Seventh hit of the ball game. And Kirsten Ross steps in. One for one. She singled left. That one sneaks in there for a called strike. The 0 1. Fouled away onto the football field. No balls and two strikes to the second baseman, Ross. Sammons will go next if Ross can reach. Two on two out here in the second. Seven runs already across for the visiting Panthers. If 
and 11. This is the 12th batter of the inning to the plate. Here's the 0-2. Misses high for a ball. 1-2. and two. One ball and two strikes. Slow roller over to Gauze, and she boots it. And then throws it away on the backside, and both runs will come home to score. So two errors on one play, and it's 9-2. to two. So nine runs across here in the frame, and Chevelle Salmons one for one. She bunted one down the line that Ratliff picked up and tried to float over top of her head toward Gauls and couldn't make the connection. This is a swing and a pitch downstairs. Vance can't get to it quickly enough, and Ross will take second base on the throw. The slapper tries to send this one down the third base side, and it gets out of play one and two. Thirteenth batter of the inning, the top of the order in the on deck circle would go next. There's a chopper towards second base. Gauls is going to have a tough play, and she can't get anybody. Now they've got the runner over at third base, hung up, and in the process of doing so, that allows Salmons to move up on the play. So an infield single for Salmons, and then she moves up on the play after Ross took the big turnover at third and got kind of stuck between no man's land. Allison Ramey lifts this one into the gap, left center field. That one's going to one hop up against the wall. Two runs will come around to score, and it's a two out, two RBI double for Ramey. She has six RBIs in the inning, and it's 11 to two. And we're going to get a call to the bullpen. Willa Reed will hand off the ball to Jill Reif. We'll break it down when we return after this on Cool TV. J.D. Flooring 2017 Ashland Road Greenup has been family owned and operated for over 30 years featuring top of the line material, guaranteed installation, and absolutely no one can beat J.D. Flooring's price. Need to replace your current flooring in one room or the entire house? Call J.D. Flooring and Greenup. 606-473-0411 for a free estimate. A call that can get your house ready for any occasion. You'll absolutely love your new flooring from J.D. Flooring, 2017 Ashland Road, Greenup. The Greenup County Public Library System is the best. Read the latest bestsellers in large print, regular print, or audio CDs. You can also check out movies or place a hold on a book on our website or call one of the library locations to place a hold. There are community meeting rooms available by reservation at all locations for clubs and organizations. And be sure to check out the Jesse Stewart Collection at the Greenup County Branch. Check them out on Facebook and Twitter. Call to the bullpen for the Rams as Jill Reif will take over inside the circle. Reif, a seventh grader. This will be her fifth appearance on the season. She's got two starts. 14 innings of work. She comes with a record of 3-0 and with one save and an ERA of one flat. Four runs, two earned, striking out 14, walking six. Book is still open on Reed with the runner of Ramey out at second base and Becca Pennington 0-1 to the plate. 
She flew out her first time and was hit by a pitch on the back end of the Ramey Grand Slam. So an 11-run inning for the visiting Panthers. And the first pitch from Rife is in there for a call strike at the belt. A one downstairs, count evens at one on one. It's the finals around Major League Baseball. Pirates beat the Phillies 5 2. Rays beat the Giants 2 1. Angels blank the Red Sox 7 0. Mets over the Royals 6 1. 1 1 at the belt. Nice pitch. 1 and 2. Red Legs have added to their lead. They lead at 7-1 over the White Sox up in Chicago. That game in the top of the seventh. Brewers beating up on the Orioles 10-1. That game over in Baltimore. 1-2 pitch. Works down and away. 2-2. Two two. Braves lead the Marlins 7-1. Rockies beating up on the Blue Jays now 10-2. That game was a 4-2 ball game two innings ago. Tigers blanking the Twins 5-0 up in Detroit. 2-2 pitch, one hopper past the glove of Gauls and into right field. Runner will come home to score, and it's 12-2. And that will also allow the runner to move up. So the error at second will allow the ball to go through and push across the 12th run of the inning. So it brings in Josie Bird, who's 0 for 1. That's at the belt, a called strike. Bird flew out to deep center field her last time out. Walked her first time through. And that one is a vapor trail to the trees. Second home run of the inning for the Panthers. And Josie Bird deposits that one where the birds live. Her seventh of the season on a no doubter to left. 14 to 2 Panthers. So Riley Shaw steps in with the bases empty. One for two in the ball game. Singular first time up and then lined out to Bernie, which was the second out of this inning. This is the ninth batter that has appeared with two outs in the inning. And the 17th batter of the inning. One on one. Shaw awaits. That's right. Goes back to work. Downstairs, two and one. So the final line on Reed will look like this. One and two-thirds innings, nine hits, 12 runs, seven earned. Did not strike out batter, walk three and hit a batter. Three and one. If Shoal reaches... Jeffers will come to the plate, and it'll be two full rotations through the lineup. And she does so. So Abby Jeffers for her second at-bat in the inning. 
She's 0 for 1 with a walk and a run scored here in the frame, and she lined out back to the pitcher to end the first. Pitch in at the knees, a called strike. The 0-1. One on one as she holds up on the check swing. Two balls and a strike. Nelson in the on-deck circle would come to the plate for the third time in the inning if the inning continues. And it's three and one. Ripe one of three seventh graders on the team. Walk puts two on now, and the inning continues for Laney Nelson, who comes to play for the third time in the inning. Lily Papa, Rife, and Allison McMacken, all three seventh graders. Shelby Gall is the lone eighth grader. Poplin and Gall's everyday starters for this team and play their positions very well. Nelson's one for one. She doubled to start the inning, came around to score, reached on a walk, and also came around to score in her second at bat in the frame. And this was a flare foul on the first base side. One ball, one strike. Two on, two out. Two and one on a pitch down and away. 14 across in the inning. Rams trying to find that elusive third out. Three and one. Rife checks in with her battery mate. To the plate she comes. Called strike there. As they said, she did not hold up. Full count. So a two on again with a full count and two outs. Runners will get a hop here on the pitch. It's a blooper out into right center field. And that one drops in for a base hit. Bernie cuts it off. She'll fire it into the infield. The runner will come around to score. They'll be out the corners, and it's 15 to 2. So Arian Cooper's two for two in the inning. A single and a double. Eleven hits in the ball game for the visiting Panthers. Ten of those coming in this inning. And here's a ball at Bernie. She settles into the gap in left center field and makes the catch and ends the inning. But the damage done in a big way as Lincoln County pushes across 15 runs on 10 hits, four race load errors. They leave a runner after an inning and a half. It's 15 to two Panthers. We're back up to this on Cool TV. At First National Bank, we strive to make every person that walks through our doors feel like family. Because to us, you are. For over 120 years, we have lived in and served the families of Kentucky with genuine care through the good times and the bad. Come and see the difference banking with family can truly make for you at any of our seven locations or visit our website at www 
www.fnbgrayson.com. First National Bank, member FDIC. Not only is State Senator Robin Webb proud to support and congratulate our youth in all their endeavors in and out of the classroom, but your State Senator Robin Webb is also proud to support and work for all the adults in her district. Robin Webb strives to put forth the best for youth and adults alike. Whether it's in Frankfurt or here at home in her district, know that Robin Webb puts you first in all of her decisions she makes. State Senator Robin Webb strives harder every day to make Kentucky a better place to work, live, and have fun. 15-2 15-2 to two as we go to the bottom of inning number two. 11 hits, 10 in the inning. All 15 runs coming across in the second for the visiting Panthers. They sent 20 hitters to the plate. Two home runs in the inning, a grand slam from Ramey, and then Bird hit one into the vapor stream that still hasn't landed yet. I would say it was on a baseball field. It would have been close to getting out on a baseball field. It was a shot. I'd heard some stuff about her coming into this ball game and the player that she is and what she brings to play. She is a dandy. So we'll see if the Rams can claw themselves back into this one. They'll be 7, 8, and 9 to up this inning. Savannah Ratliff will lead things off. And after a very long inning, you got to wonder – how it is for Arian Cooper trying to settle back in. It's been a long time since she'd thrown a pitch. Nice pitch to the outside corner for a called strike one and one. Swing and a miss. Ratliff settles herself back in. The one, two. Tried to go with a breaking ball up and away and misses very wide. Two balls and two strikes. Two-two offering, fouled straight back, and the senior hangs along, hangs on. Cold night here in Ramland, a little bit of a breeze still, making the flag dance away from the mast out there in center field. Nothing like it was at the beginning of the night. Here's the two-two, just missed. Full count. Maybe just a bit high and off the plate. Payoff pitch. Called strike three at the knees for the first out of the inning. Fourth strikeout for Cooper. And with one down, Shelby Gall steps in. Pitch to start the at bat on the breaking ball away. One and oh, oh and one, excuse me. Yeah. Up and away, count even at one and one. Two balls and a strike to the second baseman for the Rams. Russell a winner tonight over Huntington, 12 to 1 in five innings. They've got George Rogers Clark and then Lincoln County, Kentucky tomorrow. Called strike two and two. Galls is not happy about that one, thinking it was low, and I don't. 
think that I disagree with her. The 2-2. Chopped over to second baseman, trying to backhand it. Ross, she'll pick and throw and can't make the play. An infield single there as Ross kicked it off the top of her glove. Still nearly made a throw, but Gauls was able to get down the line. So a one-out single for Gauls, and that brings in the Rams right fielder, McKenna Lax. Lax batting 600 on the season. Has had limited at-bats, working as the flex, playing right field with Poplin batting for her. She looks at a pitch at the knees for a called strike, 0-1. Here's the 0-1. She chops that one foul at the plate. No balls and two strikes. The 0-2. Drop ball that crawls its way to the plate. One ball and two strikes to the right fielder for the Rams. Two and two. East Carter is supposed to play Ironton and Scott, West Virginia, tomorrow over in Grayson as part of their Tri State Showcase. Those games are up in jeopardy as well due to the weather. Two two to Lax. Works away, full count. Venues going on at Boyd County, Russell. Tomorrow in Grayson, weather pending, and then here. Payoff pitch to Lax. Misses ball four. And a one-out walk rolls it back to the top of the order. So two on, one out for the Rams, trailing 15-2 to two here in the bottom of the second as we are now one hour plus into this ball game. And we have not concluded the second inning. So Brenna Wellman... Struck out her first time through. She lifts this one over to the right, left side. That one falls in. They'll make the throw toward third, but it's not in time, and it's a single for Brenna Wellman. Heck of an effort there by Ramey, who nearly made a diving save. And Galls had to check up to make certain that she didn't catch it and then nearly gave Sammons a chance of making the throw on the force out to third. So now Peyton Mackey with the bases full and one out. A chance to get her team right back in this one. Down double digits, but only one out of the frame. Swing and a miss. Mackey had a ground rule double on her first at bat tonight. But she one-hopped the wall out there in left center field. She tries to lace this one down the first base side, but a foul ball. No balls and two strikes to Mackey. Bases full of Rams. Infield in. Tried to sneak that one in up top and just misses. One and two. Cooper only a freshman and certainly doesn't look like it inside the circle. Two offer. Tagging his galls. Here comes the throw. It's cut off at second base. Also tagging as Lax. Sacrifice fly for Peyton Mackey. It's 15 to 3. Wellman did not tag up. 
because the throw come into second base. So it brings in Callie Vance. She homered in her first at bat today. First pitch misses upstairs for a ball, 1-0. Rams with four hits in the ball game now. A little bit of work to do here. Still down by 12. That one's upstairs to Vance, 2-0. Lily Poplin in the on-deck circle would go next. Two down in the frame. One across for the Rams after the sack fly from Mackey. Here's the 2-0. Down and away, ball three. Right down the pipe, three and one. Swing and a miss. Good cut, good pitch. Full count. So that lets Wellman get an extra hop over at first. With a payoff pitch coming with two down. Vance awaits the 3 2. Lifted skyward. Pennington drafting into the gap. Reaches up, makes the catch. And is the inning. Rams get back one, they leave two. 15-3 to three through two innings of play. We go to the third after this on Cool TV. JSB Industrial Solutions, Inc. is owned and managed by Shane Wallingford to be a solutions provider for manufacturers tailoring to their specialized needs. It was created with a vision that good communication among all parties will provide the best answer to the problem. From ball mills used in pulverization to custom design of equipment or components, JSB Industrial Solutions, Inc. will gladly work with clients to resolve the issues that are prevalent. Their vision is to make your project their successful business. JSB Industrial Solutions, Tollsboro, Kentucky. Rev up your autumn adventure and refuel at Clark's Pump and Shop. Make a pit stop and treat yourself to our assortment of snacks and drinks. Clark's Pump and Shop has the perfect treats to satisfy your fall cravings. From our seasonal lattes and iced coffees to specialty donuts and desserts. Don't just fuel up your vehicle, fuel your taste buds at Clark's Pump and Shop, your ultimate road companion. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return, refresh, refuel. Top of the third inning we go, 15 to three, Lincoln County leading Raceland. All 15 runs coming in that second inning. Two up this inning, eight, nine in the top for the Panthers. Waiting on Callie Vance to get her equipment on after she finished out that last inning there. So Kirsten Ross is one for two. Single to first time through and then reached on an error by Galls out at second base. Back in that 15 run second inning. Ross a 432 hitter. First pitch in there for a cold strike. Two hopper out to Wellman. The pick and a throw, one down. That brings in Chevelle Sammons. Two for two in the ball game. She came into the contest hitless. She was 0 for three. A 
slapper of trade as she tries to come up on that one and pound it into the turf and misses everything. Nothing in one. Raceland defensively shifting around now. This one comes up and in. Gall's playing almost in between the circle and first base. Poplin down the line at third. Bernie playing a very shallow now left center field. Here's a ball back into the circle. Rife fields and throws two down. So it goes back to the top of the order, and Allison Ramey, she's two for three. Had a grand slam and a double in that second inning with six runs driven in. Lays off the first pitch as it misses high for a ball, 1-0. Two down in the third. There's a ball poked down the right field line, but a foul ball. One and one. Shortstop settles herself back in that left side, crowding the plate. Hammers this one toward Ratliff, who backhands and steps on the bag. And a clean 1-2-3 inning for the Rams. We go to the bottom of inning number three, 15-3. Lincoln County in front, back after this on Cool TV. Osman Pharmacy and Grill, located at 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg, Kentucky, offers fast and friendly service with a hometown feel. Check out their specialty items in person or order them online at osmondpharmacy.com. Osman Pharmacy and Grill also has daily dinner specials where you can dine in or get your order to go. Stop by or call Osman Pharmacy and Grill today. Osman Pharmacy and Grill, 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg. When you have business away from home or a planned event far from your comfort zone, you're probably going to need a little help. Let a and Porta Potties assist you with all your portable toilet needs, whether on a construction site, planning for an outdoor wedding, or any other outdoor event. a and Porta Potties are here to assist you. a and Porta Potties also rents out storage containers, office containers, cooling fans, tables, and chairs. a and Porta Potties, there is no event too big or too small for us to accommodate you. Fifteen to three as we go to the bottom of inning number three. Four, five, and six do up this inning for the Rams. It'll be Poplin, Mackey, and Bernie. Poplin walked her first time through tonight. First pitch misses low for a ball. That's at the knees down the middle of the plate for a call strike one and one. Breaking ball runs up and away, two and one. The count moves to. Three and one. Foul at the plate, three and one. (laughs) 
Payoff pitch called strike three at the knees. One down. Fifth strikeout for Cooper. And in comes Reagan Mackey. Mackey caught looking. Back on the first. The 1 0. Two balls and no strikes. One thing with Cooper is she's not had clean innings by any means. 70 pitches, 38 of those for strikes. That's 54%. She certainly has the velocity on the screwball when she wants it. Two and one there. Swing and a miss. Two balls and two strikes to the senior designated player of Reagan Mackey. That one fouled off the mask. A bird there at the plate. Two two fouled away. Swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back strikeouts, two down in the third. So brings in Bailey Bernie. She struck out the end of the first. and one on the foul ball off to the first base side. The 0 one. Nice pitch on the outer half. Nothing at two. One ball and two strikes. Tries to work up and misses away. Roped foul into the bullpen. Ram center fielder settles back in. Base is empty. Two down in the third. Down one and two. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Cooper fans aside, we played three, 15 to three. We go to the fourth after this on Cool TV. 
When you want real, authentic Mexican menu items, you want Tres Hermanos Nunez. Accept no substitutes. None compares. Fajitas, tacos, burritos, quesadillas, chimichangas, even vegetarian choices. A kid's menu, desserts, and salads, a tasty, budget-pleasing selection for you and your family, unlike any others, should be your first and only choice for authentic Mexican all throughout the tri-state. Ashland, Greenham, Grayson, Paintsville, Canova, South Point, Olive Hill, and Cannonsburg. Tres Hermanos Nunez, the best around where does your money go when you bank with us your deposit becomes your neighbor's loan a real estate agent sells a house they get a commission they deposit it with us we use it to make an auto loan to one of our customers hometown people helping each other grow that's what it's all about first in people's bank and trust company member FDIC we are the home office Fifteen three as we go to the fourth. Two, three, and four do up this inning for the Panthers. Becca Pennington leads things off. She's over two. Flew out of the first, reached on an error and scored in the second. She was also hit by a pitch in that inning. Chops this one back to Rife. She can't make the play. Goss fields and not in time. So the infield single by Pennington. Gives Lincoln County their 12th hit of the ball game. That brings up Josie Bird, who hit one out to the Birds her last time through. Lincoln County team with 11 home runs tonight or coming into this game with the two they've hit in this game. And she's got seven of them. And she ropes one right past Rife inside the circle for her second hit of the night. We've got a courtesy runner for the catcher. And Starcher will come on to run for the catcher. So Riley Shaw steps in, the right fielder, singled in the first, flew out in the second, and walked and scored in the in the second on her second time through. Lifts this one weakly. Wellman runs into the umpire. Mackey's there to make the catch for the first out of the inning. Wellman turned and was starting her trek toward the ball, and her and the umpire collided, and she lost. But Mackey was there to make a nice play either way. So it brings in Abby Jeffers, who's 0 for 1. She had a liner right back to the circle back in the first inning to end the first, and then walked in both of plate appearances in the second, she came around to score in one of those. Two on, one out. Nice block there by Vance to keep the runners at bay at first and second, respectfully. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Two balls and a strike. Boyle County rolls in here tomorrow at 10. They've got two games on tap. They'll play Raceland first and then Portsmouth Notre Dame at two. There's a chopper foul at the plate. Two balls and two strikes. Two two misses low. Full count. So 
That's ball four, and the bases are loaded. Sixth walk tonight, given up by Rams pitching. Seventh free pass, including the hit batter. So Laney Nelson's two for two. Called strike on the outer half. She came to the plate three times in the second inning. Doubled her first time, walked her second, and singled in the third. Great stop there by Vance to keep those runners at bay. Bases full of Panthers with one out of the inning. Misses upstairs just high, two and one. Down and in, three and one. Rife back on the rubber, the pitch. And this is a rocket over top of the head. No, reaching up and making the catch was Mackey. Three, 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 three. Now they've got players hung up, and they're going to get the double play. That's three outs. Guys, you have three outs. The four's out, and then the tag, and that's your inning. Can't get four outs. The run does count on the tag up. So makes it 16-3 to three as we head to the bottom of the fourth after this on Cool TV. Primary Plus is celebrating 40 years of its mission of quality, advanced, affordable health care. With over 11 primary care locations throughout the region, Primary Plus believes in our communities and our patients. The Primary Plus name means primary care plus so much more. Offering extended services such as women's health, pediatrics, dental, counseling, diabetes management, infusion services, and on-site pharmacy that offers free delivery. Primary Plus believes in connecting health care for you and your family and is always welcoming new patients. Learn more at primaryplus.net. If you can picture yourself in a better job and a better life, there are thousands of openings in Kentucky right now. And with the Work Ready Kentucky Scholarship, you can prepare for many of them tuition free. Good at Ashland Community and Technical College, this scholarship offers 100% free tuition for classes that can prepare you for a great job in healthcare, advanced manufacturing, and more in as little as 13 weeks. Get started today at WorkReadyKentucky.com. 16 to 3 as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Umpires having a conversation after the conversation with head coach Scott Atkins. I think he's questioning whether or not the runner left early at third. The issue is that they already left the run, they already left the field, so there's really no no way they can make an appeal on the play. So 16 runs on 13 hits. Hey, here you go. Now that is for your late one, main Rams. Seven, eight, and nine do up this inning for the uh, Rams as it'll be Ratliff, Gauls, and Lax. Ratliff caught looking her first time through in the second. Rams got some work to do here to keep this from turning into a shortened game as they need at least four and they have to hold between this inning and next or the game will come to a stop of the fifth. 16 to three, your score, 15 of those coming across in that second inning. 
Swing and a miss. One on one. Took us an hour and one minute to play this two innings in this ball game, and which was one of the craziest second innings I've ever been a part of, and all the time I've been around the game. Lincoln County sent 20 batters to the plate. Breaking ball just misses. Two one. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Radloff settles back in. There's a blooper out into left center field, and Ratliff's on with a single. That brings it Shelby Galls. Galls one for one in the ball game. Singleton scored in the second. Pitch that's called a strike, one on one. Make a cut and drift. One and two. Called strike three on the outside corner. One down. Eighth strike out of the ball game for Cooper. That brings in McKenna Lax. Lax walked in her only at bat in the ball game. Stranded at third base. Called strike at the top of the zone. A one fouled away over on the third base dugout. Nothing at two. Miss somewhere, just not sure where. One and two. That one's wide, two and two. Chelsea Bird just looked at the umpire and said, you sure about that one? And tapped him on the shoulder. <laughs> two balls, two strikes, one out of runner reward is Ratliff with a single. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Second strike out of the inning. Ninth of the ball game for Cooper. And we go back to the top of the order and Brenna Wellman. Someone struck out her first time through, singled her last time up on a single to left. That's high for a ball, 1-0.
2-0 to Wellman. Peyton Mackey to go next. Pitch at the belt, outside corner, two and one. Swung on, straight at the center fielder, Pennington. Hauls it in and ends the inning. Ram strand a pair. We go to the fifth, 16-3 Lincoln County. We're back after this on Cool TV. I'm April Perry, the CEO of Kentucky Farmers Bank. On average, our employees have been with Kentucky Farmers Bank for over 10 years, and that is important to you and us. We want you to know who you are dealing with. Whether you are financing a new home, buying a car, or remodeling your kitchen, Kentucky Farmers Bank is the better bank for all your needs. Kentucky Farmers Bank, the better bank for all your financial needs since 1931. Located in Ashland, Summit, and Catlettsburg. KentuckyFarmersBank.com, member FDIC and equal housing lender. If you're looking for a complete discount pharmacy with old-fashioned service and excellent prices, look no more. Since 1979, Stultz Pharmacy has provided our area with the finest in pharmacy care, 24-hour emergency prescription service, free delivery, and drive through service for prescriptions. Stultz Pharmacy continues to fill all of your expectations. They carry a nice selection of gift items. For hometown service, see the professionals at Stultz Pharmacy in Greenup. More than you expect from a pharmacy. Stultz Pharmacy. 16 to 3 as we go to the fifth. Rams trying to keep it at three, that actually four that they would need in the bottom half of this inning to keep this game alive or this game will come to a stop due to the run rule. 7 8 and 9 do up this inning for the visiting Panthers. Arian Cooper's two for three. She leads things off. Cooper a single and a double, and then she lined out to end that second inning. And a deep ball to center field to Bailey Burney. Two and zero. Oh. Cooper Ross and Salmon's the three to go in the home fifth. It'll be two, three, and four. Rife back to work. Chopped foul of the play two and two. Finals around the majors tonight. Pirates over the Phillies 5-2. Braves defeat the Giants 2-1. Brewers hammer the Orioles 11-1. Rockies over the Blue Jays 12-4. They pound out 20 hits tonight up at Toronto. Angels beat the Red Sox 7-0. Mets over the Royals 6-1. Braves beat the Marlins 8-1. Reds winners over the White Sox 11-1. Yankees and Guardians postponed due to weather. Full count at the plate. Rife to the plate. Here it comes. It's off the end of the bat and past the glove of Shelby Gauls and a leadoff single for Arian Cooper, her third hit of the night. So it brings in the second baseman of Kirsten Ross. Ross is one for three. Single and reaching on air in the second and then grounded out to open the third. Game still underway. Tigers lead the Twins eight to one at the top of the ninth up in Detroit. Rangers hammering the Astros 12 to five down in, the, in Houston in the seventh. Chopper foul on the third base side. Athletics and the Nationals just getting underway. They're in the fourth out in Oakland, 1-0 Athletics. Mariners lead the Cubs, 1-0 out at T-Mobile Park in Seattle, bottom of the third inning. Cardinals all over the D-backs, 6-0 out in Arizona. That game in the bottom of the third, and the Padres and Dodgers just underway, 2-1 Padres lead. Here's a throw down to second base, and sliding in safely is Cooper.
Two balls and a strike to Ross. Lifted skyward, right side. Gall sizing it up, makes the catch, tagging a tree. So the base is empty and Chevelle Salmons to the plate. Now the umpires are having another meeting. It was a very short meeting. I think it was the, are you hungry? Yes. All right, he's safe. All right, so they'll say it was two for three. In the turf, one and one. Top of the order, and Ramey do up next. Up and in, two and one. A flare right at Wellman at short, and she hauls it in for the second out. So we'll go back to the top of the order, and Allison Ramey, who's two for four. Both of her hits coming in that second inning, a grand slam and a two-RBI double. Flew out in the first and grounded out to end the third. Swing and a miss. Nice pitch there. She came up and in on her hands. Count evens at one and one. One one chopped over to Ratliff. She'll field it in fair territory with a foot on the back, and then ends the inning. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Rams need at least five. They trail at seventeen to three. We're back after this on Cool TV. <laughs> Spring fishing season is just around the corner, and Border Sporting Goods is your fishing headquarters for rods and reels from G. Loomis, St. Croix, Fenwick, Luz, Daiwa, Shimano, and Abu Garcia. No matter what species of fish you are targeting, Borders has the perfect setup to make your next trip on the water a success. Borders has baits in every style and size, with a wide selection of tackle from Berkeley, Strike King, Zoom, Z-Man, Bandit, and many more. Before hitting the water for your next fishing trip, stop by and stock up at Border Sporting Goods, US 60 West in Ashland. River Cities Builders is a licensed general contractor specializing in commercial and industrial projects, and they have a history and reputation of providing top-notch expertise through their experienced and devoted workforce. River Cities Builders also is a gas facility maintenance company offering petroleum equipment maintenance and EMV compliant upgrades for smart payment terminals, and they offer 24 hours, seven days a week emergency service. Call 606-473-4112 or visit River Cities buildersinc.com 17-3 as we go to the bottom of the fifth Rams need at least five to keep this game alive in the meat of the order 2-3 and 4 do up this inning Mackey, Vance and Poplin Pete Mackey one for one in the ball game had a ground rule double in the first came around to score had a sacrifice fly in the second And I believe we've got some rain. Jeez, oh, Pete. 
Mackey hits this one up into the rain. Ross fighting the rain, brings it down and makes the catch. One pitch, one out. You hear, hear people always talk about how much it rains in Seattle. There is no way it could possibly rain more in Seattle than it rains in Kentucky. It rains when it's not even supposed to rain. Cali Vance one for two. It is coming down a pretty nice little shower here. First pitch called strike. Vance two run homer in the first. It has rained every single day this week since Monday. And that one gets past the catcher into the backstop. Count evens at one and one. Still just a minor, looking at the radar, just a minor grazing of a shower. It's just getting everything wet right now. Comes inside two and one. Two, one, fouled away. You know, the only thing we haven't seen this week is snow. I mean, might as well. No, I mean, at the rate it's going right now, it might be. We may see some snow before this one's over. I mean, that wouldn't be surprising. That would be such a Kentucky thing to happen this week. I mean, everything we've seen, I mean, might as well throw a little snow in there with it. 2-2 to Vance, misses high for a ball. The latest I ever remember it snowing in Kentucky, though, it snowed on my birthday one year in the middle of May. I played I played golf that evening and it snowed the last three holes. Payoff pitch, swung out of miss, strike three, two down. So two down, Lily Poplin to the play. She's 0 for 1. Struck out looking in the third. That one rolls the plate for a ball, 1 and 0. Now, the chances of rain tomorrow are none. So that means that we definitely will see at some point probably get a shower. It's supposed to be beautiful tomorrow. Seven, near 70 tomorrow, near 80 by the first of the week. Good pitch there. Swung on a miss, one on one. Two and one. Two balls and two strikes. Cooper wants a new ball. Like the rain has stopped for the moment after a brief shower. So Poplin battling here as Cooper tries to close things out for the victory. Full count. Reagan Mackey, the on-deck circle, would go next.
Called strike three at the shoelaces, and that's your ball game. 17-3 in five is your final score. Post game, will we return after this on Cool TV? J.D. Flooring, 2017 Ashland Road Greenup has been family owned and operated for over 30 years, featuring top of the line material, guaranteed installation, and absolutely no one can beat J.D. Flooring's price. Need to replace your current flooring in one room or the entire house? Call J.D. Flooring in Greenup, 606-473-0411 for a free estimate. A call that can get your house ready for any occasion. You'll absolutely love your new flooring from J.D. Flooring. 2017 Ashland Road, Greenup. The Greenup County Public Library System is the best. Read the latest bestsellers in large print, regular print, or audio CDs. You can also check out movies or place a hold on a book on our website or call one of the library locations to place a hold. There are community meeting rooms available by reservation at all locations for clubs and organizations. And be sure to check out the Jesse Stewart Collection at the Greenup County Branch. Check them out on Facebook and Twitter. Seventeen three, your final here in five innings. It was a fifteen run second inning for Lincoln County. They sent twenty batters to the plate, and uh, they poured it on here. Two home runs tonight. Ramey with six RBIs in that second inning. She goes two for five tonight. The other home run coming from Josie Bird, the catcher. She goes two for three. Nelson goes two for two. Cooper, three for four. As they pound out 14 hits. Cooper, Ramey, and Nelson with doubles. Ramey and Bird with the home runs. For Raceland, they put up five hits tonight. Nobody with double hits. Vance goes one for three with a two-run home run in the first inning when the Rams took the early 2-0 lead. Peyton Mackey with a ground rule double. That got things going there in that first inning. Final numbers look like this pitching-wise for Cooper. She goes five innings, five hits, three runs, all earned. Struck out 11, walked two. She'll take the win. Willow Reed goes an inning and a two-thirds, nine hits, 12 runs, seven earned. Does not strike out a batter. She walks three. She'll suffer the loss. Reif goes the final three and a third innings, five hits, five runs, only one earned. Does not strike out a batter. She walks three. Both gave up a home run. Box score looks like this for Lincoln County. 17 runs on 14 hits, no errors. They leave five runners on base. For the Rams, three runs, five hits, five errors. They leave four runners on base. Took us an hour and 50 minutes to decide this one. An hour and a minute to play the first two innings. But Lincoln County shows why they are the number two team in Class, single, class AAA in the state of West Virginia as they power out this one 17-3 for the victory over the Rams. With the loss, the Rams take only their third loss of the season as they fall to 16-2, and 16-3, and three, excuse me, now on the year. Up tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, Boyle County comes in. The Rams will have them. And we'll be with you beginning at 9.50 for pregame coverage and 10 o'clock, first pitch right here on Cool TV. A hat tip to my crew tonight, Travis Altworth and Felicia Collier battling the elements, doing a fabulous job as always. Greatly appreciate all their efforts. Again, your final score, Lincoln County wins at 17-3 for Travis Altworth, Felicia Collier. Everyone at the Coolwood Sports Network, I'm James Carr saying good night. We'll talk to you tomorrow morning right here on Cool TV. Thank you for watching another Raceland Rams broadcast live on Cool TV. This broadcast of Raceland Rams softball has been an exclusive sports presentation of the Coolwood Sports Network and Cool TV.